And for the most part, you know, Ebro divides opinion with some of the hip hop kids out there because, you know, they sometimes think he's kind of, he purposely and cornerly, and maybe cornerly, as a corny guy, he maybe purposely plays on a whole like being an old head. And, you know, he's kind of, I think his name on Instagram is called Old Man Something, right? So he kind of probably plays on that, plays a bad guy in hip hop now. And um, in general, kids are surprised that he got the job because in most of his interviews, especially with some of the younger generation kids, he always kind of does that thing that a lot of the guys, even some of the guys at Breakfast Club, they do that thing where like they purposely let the artists know again and again that they haven't listened to their music, right? That they're only there because of the label kind of got them the, the kind of seat at the table per se, which I always find very, very disrespectful in that regard. I don't really see what that's all about. Um, again, maybe this is the generational gap kind of maybe can explain it, but I never got the thing about interviewing somebody and having no idea what they're doing, what they did before. I know I, it, has, it used to irk me a lot when I used to sometimes listen to BBC Radio 5 Live or whatever it may be, or BBC Radio 2, and they used to have authors on and write particular books, and they'd have them on, and then the, the, the interviewer or the radio host had clearly not even read read a couple of interviews with the person or maybe watched a video interview, because sometimes if you don't have to read, maybe reading a book before the interview is maybe a bit of a stretch, right? But at least watch the author in the interview. You can maybe get a brief synopsis of what they're kind of talking about of the book through the interview. But they'd done no background research and just kind of going off the notes that a producer gave them, which are usually, you know, very simplistic and kind of surface and don't have any sort of depth to them and aren't really conducive to answering, to asking better questions. So it always kind of run me the wrong way. I never really got what that was about. But then I also didn't get why all the kids were so desperate to get on Hot 97 when most of these, these SoundCloud rappers or some of these guys from the younger generation have, ine- have inevitably, invariably, got on by kind of circumventing this hip-hop i mean the sorry the radio platforms that's what they've kind of done right with the advent of streaming you don't necessarily need to be a radio anymore if you want to be a radio maybe it's because you want to be a commercial star you know kind of cross over to pop in some regards but for the most part still where the main sh- revenue and streams or the main kind of exposure comes through is through streaming platforms so i never really got why I never really got why Ebro didn't do the research about artists he was re- re- um, interviewing, and I also didn't get why these Sankar rappers were so different to get into a show where someone clearly didn't give a fuck who you who you were and what you're about, and also wasn't going to get you to the next level they actually thought they were going to get you to. So that was kind of surprising. But this is this to me isn't surprising. Ebro getting his job. So this is an article from just to put out there my stance. I'm not surprised at all. So this is an article from Billboard. And, uh, it says here. Hot 97, New York Morning Personality, um, Apple Music um, beats one anchor host Ebro, has appoint, has been appointed Apple Music Global Editorial Head of Hip Hop and R&B. In this, in this newly designed, designated role, which he starts today on January 2nd, Darden will manage a team of hip hop and R&B editors in developing editorial strategies for artists, albums and song races in the US and globally. Huh. Are they, are they turning Apple Music into a fucking label? Based in... Um, hmm. Based in New York, Darden will continue to host the popular Hot 97 shows. So he's not leaving that. He will also continue to showcase latest music and shows and and issues on his on his show on there. Uh, prior to Darden's appointment, Carly Cherry served as Apple's head of artist curation with a specific focus on hip hop and R and B. In announcing Darden's expanded role at hip hop music, Apple Music, the service global the services global director of editorial Rachel Newman told Billboard. We're excited that Ebro is joining us in a full-time capacity, having de- dedicated his life and career in hit to hip-hop and R&B and pop music. He has to offer, he has much to offer. One of Ebro's most defining characters is that he has a great ear for where R&B hip-hop are transcending and evolving beyond even the balls of the US. Hmm, does he really, though? Does he travel much? Don't think so. Um, does he? I don't, I don't know. Is that really true, though? I'm not too sure. Again, me no, no. He has obviously taken the leadership position for us that's not just in hip hop and R&B, but also in the communities where the music is made, which is made, which is also exciting and, and something unique to Ebro. Outlining his immediate goals, Darden said, the first things first um, is making sure that we're firing on all cylinders in the best way possible, helping consumers find the way that they love music that they love, also helping us connect with the consumers in the real time, in a real way, sorry. Once I learn about once I learn about what's needed to achieve that, it will be looking ahead and figuring out ways to serve the communities and where hip hop and R and B music is made. Black music comes from the community. This is some, this is music made by people living real lives, artists speaking on behalf of those real lives. If we're doing our job, Darden continues, we'll be con- we'll be able to get down to the community level and connect with those. This is a global position as well. So as, to, as well as as so as we build this out, I'll be doing the same. I think I want to do in America, UK, France, India, Japan, Brazil, and other countries. I'll be wherever R&B hip hop 
are being consumed and working to create communication amongst communities around the world through Apple Music, making sure that black music is getting recognized and developing the next superstar. Darden is joined. Oh, okay. There we go. So, interesting, right? Interesting, interesting. So, Darden served as Hotline 7 uh, Music Director. Yeah, we all know this before. So, interesting. Global head of... It's, it's interesting because... He doesn't necessarily strike me. He was never struck, struck, struck me as somebody who was um, at the forefront for discovering new artists or bringing them to the forefront, right? Because this seems like a way of, this seems like a role where he's going to be in charge of maybe cult, maybe not discovering is the right way. He's never even, he's never really seemed very editorial to me either in that respect, if I'm being completely honest. Um, how to kind of get that message across, right? In terms of how to communicate stuff with the artist. Um, if I'm looking at Hot 97 in the main part, I don't know if it's anything to do with him, but they were very late on getting on top of the whole um, YouTube uh, video clip stuff, right? That's why the Breakfast Club kind of stole a march on Hot 97 for the most part. Uh, they obviously had maybe more interesting guests, maybe more um, explosive interviews, but for the most part, they kind of stole a march on Hot 97 by really going hard with the whole digital landscape thing. Hot 97 caught up really late. And then when they did it, you know, they were kind of seemed a bit fuddy-duddy because they kind of took this stance um, where it was mostly based on, you know, politics. Ibro talking about a lot of politics during the whole... I think prior to the whole um, Black Lives Matter movement kind of rising, that kind of was a time some of the people on the station kind of took a stance and took a position of being maybe quote-unquote on-air activist, which maybe kind of tainted a little bit of their messaging in some regard, you know, because, you know, maybe sometimes people want to go, people want to listen to the show just to kind of have an escape from day-to-day -day lives, not want to be reminded what's happening in um, society, but then maybe on their regard, on their part, they see it as their obligation to do that, who knows? But regardless, it never really seemed as if like they had a real good grasp on how they're communicating the message or how they come across. It always seemed as if like they were uh, they were aware of it but didn't care. You know, Ebro kind of played on the whole idea of him being an you know a basically an adult troll, which kind of worked in his in his graces in that respect. Um, but again, it's not. I'm not surprised he got the job. Like I said in the beginning, I just think sometimes people need to realize that most people in these big positions, especially people that are given the jobs that like Ebro is given. Um, the ones above them don't necessarily know, um, aren't necessarily as plugged into their culture as they should be. That's why they hire a person like Ibra, right? In order to kind of make those kind of decisions. And then when they want to make the next step forward, then the only possible person that they're gonna hire are the ones in and amongst them. Because if they, if they didn't know who, if they didn't know who to hire before Ibra came in, do you think if they get him on board and he's saying all the right things and he's got this really good background, twenty seven, blah 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 blah? That they're going to go out and kind of get an external person and you might know a bit more who might be a little bit more plugged into leader. It doesn't make any sense. And this isn't even like a good, this isn't, I don't think this is even like a big front facing role where they're kind of wanting somebody who's kind of well known uh, to kind of front something. This kind of just seemed like an editorial thing where you kind of need somebody to be a little bit more plugged in and understand the digital landscape and how to get exposure and how to really connect with the artists and how to get them connected with their fans. It's not like a influencer type role. So that kind of, makes it confusing too because if that was the case then maybe he's a good example of it because you know he is kind of you know one of the recognizable faces in in um, new york and maybe u.s based hip-hop radio but again like i said i just don't think it's a big surprise i think if you're a kid out then you're pissed off you've got this job i think it's your responsibility to get on your shit and to make sure that you're involved in these conversations but i don't think it's his responsibility to kind of like you know what's that word called to kind of uh, move out of the way and give the young kids room that's that's ridiculous i don't know if all, i never really got that kind of way of thinking oh give the kids space so they can come in and do it as well like why why should i do that i'm earning i'm it's, it, it, this is my career i'm earning a living do you know what i mean I'm, I'm trying to support my family with this why should i be worried about what the kids are doing or how they feel about something that doesn't make any sort of sense whatsoever so that's something that never really kind of vibed with me that well um so if you do want to get him out of the role you have to then decide what you want to do and kind of make the right choices the right move to kind of get involved in these circles but again i'm not surprised um i think the thing i'm surprised about that it, it does sound like apple music are starting to kind of veer into label territory it sounds like that's what they're heading into because why else would Apple want to do what they're doing? Maybe because in general, you know, Spotify has an editorial board, uh, I'm assuming, um, editorial team, sorry, I'm assuming Tidal probably have one too and YouTube Music. So it makes sense that they were doing this, but it seems that they're really trying to angle themselves maybe along the, you know, the kind of um, the label route because especially some of the rec may the big record labels and most of the main ones are located, head, head offices are in New York as well in the first place. So that might may lend more credence to it. So you just see how it develops. You just see where it goes from there. Like I said, there might be more people more deserving of it. Who really gives a fuck? 
I think, like I said, people like Ebro, they don't stay, they don't have jobs for, for no reason, right? They have jobs because they're obviously good at what they do. And in general, for the most part, they just outlast. I think some of these people are just able to continually get really sick positions on paper. Don't get me wrong, because again, it's just another job um, that he signed on for. Um, they're able to do that because they just they just endure. They just are able to hang around or not hang around. They're able to kind of endure and fight through kind of difficult periods. And then when it comes to the next sort of phase or next sort of era comes about and needs someone else for a role, they're not the person to come and hire. So that's another thing that needs to kind of be, be uh, said more often. You know, what one of the main traits is not hard work or one of the kind of, you know, paths to success is not mainly just even hard work. Sometimes it can just be, you know, endurance being able to kind of withstand all the kind of pellets you're going to get along the way and then maybe along the way at the end of the road there'll be a chance for you to finally then kind of get your just deserved because there'll be no one else left around because everyone's kind of gave up because it's not as comfortable as before the start so yeah so i guess congrats to, to ebro on the on the role interesting to see how it develops and where it goes from there and what apple do next time and or maybe the next couple of years or so where they're quote unquote label or whatever situation it is now at the moment because it seems it seems like a bit like the head in that kind of realm but maybe i'm completely wrong who knows 